Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zafan Walbajwa and I'm from the Department of BS Chemistry. Today I am uh, going to present uh, my presentation that is uh, about the topic uh, retrochemistry analysis and synthesis or retro synthesis or retrochemistry. Uh, first of all, uh, before moving towards my topic, we should know about what is organic synthesis. Uh, so the organic synthesis is that the preparation of a desired organic compound from readily available starting materials uh, is known as organic synthesis. Uh, organic synthesis is the, is the, uh, the formation of a product uh, uh, from the supplied or given uh, reagents. Uh, for example, if we wish to uh, if if we wish to uh, form an organic about three four dibromohexane, I would like to draw a structure uh, here. Mm, here, carbon number three, carbon number four five, and six one two three four five, and here is the carbon number six. If we wish to draw two bromo or uh, three bromo, sorry, three uh, here. Uh, I'm not good in annotating, so uh, here is uh, uh, the compound which I wish to draw or synthesize from acetylene is three, four, a carbon number three, one, we can calculate carbon from one, two, three, four, five, and six. So number, carbon number three and carbon number contain, uh, carbon number four contain and uh, two bromine atoms. So the two, uh, two uh, three, four dibromohexane. If we wish to draw uh, this product from acetylene that is H C triple bond C H. Uh, if we given uh, this uh, uh, reagent and uh, we ask to uh, synthesize this product, so this is organic synthesis. Now coming towards my topic, which is uh, retrosynthesis. So, what introduction of the retrosynthesis? Retrosynthesis or disconnection approach is the process of breaking uh, down a target molecule into readily available starting material by means of imaginary breaking of bonds, that is disconnection, and by the conversion of one functional group into another by efficient chemical reactions, that is functional group interconversion. Uh, so retrosynthesis is the process of mentally breaking down a molecule that is target molecule uh, into starting materials or precursor uh, uh, materials or the reagents that uh, are the simpler that is target molecule uh, converted into simpler by disconnections uh, uh, and uh, functional group interconversions. So uh, in uh, retrosynthesis, these starting uh, materials or the reagents may be different uh, as in organic synthesis, uh, we are given uh, only a single uh, reagent or, uh, or uh, a single reagent or compound from which the target molecule is uh, being synthesized. In retrosynthesis, the, uh, material, the uh, material reagent that is obtained may be different because it depends upon the root uh, or the disconnection uh, th that we take uh, in the retrosynthetic analysis of a, a particular compound. Uh, so, Retrosynthesis, uh, retrosynthesis is a technique of problem solving in the planning of organic synthesis. So moving towards the retrosynthetic analysis, the process of breaking down a target molecule in available uh, starting materials by FGI and disconnection is known as retrosynthesis and retrosynthetic analysis. So retrosynthetic analysis can be done by two methods. The uh, number one is functional group FGI, that is functional group interconversion. Uh, and the second one is disconnection. First of all, we will discuss what is functional group interconversion. The process of converting one functional group into another by means of 
uh, that is, uh, sorry, the process of converting one functional group into another by substitution, addition, elimination, oxidation, or, uh, or reduction, and the reverse process and in analysis, that is functional group interconversion. Uh, and the next one is disconnection. Uh, the reverse operation to a reaction, the imagined cleavage of a bond to break the molecule into possible starting materials. Uh, uh, disconnection is a paper operation involving an imagined cleavage of a bond. The bond cleavage should be technical. Here, the information should be remained in uh, mind. Uh, remember, should be remembered uh, before every retrosynthetic analysis taking place. Uh, so. The information is that the bond cleavage should be technical. That is the reason there is sh there should be a reason behind every bond cleavage or the every functional group interconversion. Uh, so uh, there should be reason behind the cleavage. We cannot break a bond uh, with our own wish. Uh, rather, uh, rather we should have a technical reason when uh, in uh, until we have a technical reason. So we understand. Uh, functional group interconversion and uh, disconnection better with an example. So I have uh, listed two examples, uh, one for functional group interconversion and the second one for disconnection. So uh, the example of fun uh, functional group interconversion, we have uh, we have one pentene or pentene. Uh, so double bond is a functional group. When we uh, when we add water into one pentene, we obtained two pentanol this is an alcohol this is uh, the first one is an alkene uh, i would like to annotate it this one is alkene and when we add water to alkene uh, double bond we have uh, converted the functional group to alcohol this is alcohol to uh, pentanol when we further oxidize the alcohol or alcoholic functional group uh, using potassium uh, potassium chromate dichromate or potassium chromate that we using sulfuric acid we will convert uh, we can convert alcohol functional group into acetone functional group and upon further uh, upon the reaction of functional uh, ketone functional group with Grignard reagent and acidic hydrolysis, we can convert the functional group again into alcohol. But, but this time the alcohol will be tertiary alcohol. So this is an example of the uh, here. I would uh, like to repeat this. Uh, we, first of all, we convert the the head of the conversion of uh, uh, pantene uh, and alkene to alcohol and then again alcohol to acetone and then again acetone to alcohol so this is functional group interconversion in this way we use chemical reactions or reagents uh, to convert one functional group into another here this is an addition of uh, hydroxyl group that's uh, uh, addition reaction uh, and uh, then uh, this is oxidation of the hydroxyl group uh, so we use these reactions uh, in our later course uh, uh, presentation. The next one uh, is the uh, disconnection. Example of disconnection is here we have a compound containing R1 and carbon, uh, two carbons uh, and, and a second alkyl group R2. When we cleaved uh, the bond between carbon carbon, we have two possibilities, path one and path two. In uh, possibility one, that is path, uh, uh, path one, uh, we have an alkyl radical or carbocation in uh, uh, carbocation with R1 group uh, and uh, carbon anion with R2 group. In the second possibility, we have carbon anion with, that is carbon anion with R1 group. And uh, this, uh, in this, uh, the next one is, our, the next reagent is the carbocation with R2 group. So there is two possibilities. When uh, Whenever we cleaved a bond between, uh, between any E2 atoms, there will be two possibilities. And here I listed uh, the in the in this example. So this is uh, a disconnection and functional group interconversion. The uh, two methods used in the retrosynthetic analysis. Uh, now we will move towards uh, the retrosynthetic analysis of different compounds. Uh, to better understand what is retrosynthesis, we should uh, uh, we should. Uh, have an example of uh, uh, retrosynthetic analysis of different compounds. Uh, so the the uh, the compounds uh, that is 
uh, that will be going to retrosynthetic, uh, uh, that will be undergoing retrosynthetic analysis in this presentation or 1,5-diphenyl pentane, one old. The next one is N4-hydroxyphenyl aceta, amide, And the next one is ethyl 4 acetamide ethyl for amino benzo 8 uh, and the next one is 2 bromo 2 chloro 1 1 1 trifluoroethane and the next one is 2 phenyl ethyl hydrazine and the last one is 1 chloro 4 4 chlorophenyl sulfonyl ethyl benzene so these are the compounds iopic names of the compounds uh, that are going to be retrosynthetic uh, analysis uh, so, first of all, moving towards uh, the first compound, 1,5-diphenyl pentane, 1 ol uh, So, uh, the retrosynthetic analysis of the 1,5-diphenyl pentane, 1 ol will have different uh, routes, multiple routes. It may have multiple routes. Uh, we can break uh, uh, bonds between carbon and phenyl group uh, uh, at carbon number one uh, from here. Uh, the next possibility is uh, listed as I in the route one. Uh, the next possibility will be between the carbon number two and three. Here, uh, four and uh, three and four, five, four and five, and five and, five and phenyl group. Uh, here are many possibilities uh, and the routes. These are the routes. Whenever we uh, use another uh, cleavage uh, uh, rather than this one we have another root uh, synthetic root so we have different roots uh, for the synthesis of uh, one five diphenyl pentane one ol so the root that uh, i have listed uh, i have written here in the example uh, is the first of all we will uh, perform disconnections between ca carbon number one and carbon number two uh, that uh, here is written we have two possibilities path a and path b in which uh, uh, in path a we have uh, a carbon anion uh, anion uh, attached to hydroxyl group and phenyl group and uh, uh, carbon cation which is attached to phenyl group uh, with car uh, four three carbons here four uh, sorry four carbons uh, number one, number two, number three, and number four. Uh, in the next uh, possibility, we have uh, carbocation, uh, which is attached to phenyl group and hydroxyl group, uh, and uh, we have carbon anion, which is attached to phenyl group. Uh, so th the uh, the reagents, these were the synthons. Here, we should know the difference uh, between the synthons and the reagents. Synthons. As a result of disconnection, usually positive and negative ions are produced, which are called synthons. As I uh, written here, when we perform any disconnection, we have positive and negative ions. These ions are called synthons. And these are not the reagents. There is a difference between the reagents and the synthons. So the reagent. Uh, is the actual compound used to function as synthons are known as reagents. Uh, so the, the reagent of this compound is not known. The reagent of this compound is 1-bromo-4-phenyl-butane. 4-phenyl-butane. So this is the reagent of this compound, uh, uh, this uh, carbocation. Uh, we can uh, simple understand uh, the relation between the synthon and the reagent by uh, having an example for example we have two alkyl groups attached by a bond that is r1 and this is attached to r when we perform this connection we have two cations uh, one cation and one anion with this will be r positive and here we will we'll have r negative so these are the synthons are positive these are positive ion and negative ions are the synthons and their reagent will be like here i would like to draw the reagent of this uh, positive ion like oil alkyl bromide this is the reagent that provides the or positive ion or uh, that provide the or positive ion or functions uh, for the positive ion and the 
see uh, reagent for the uh, negative ion will be Grignard reagent alkyl magnesium bromide alkyl magnesium bromide so this will be the reagent for the negative ion so there is a difference between synthon and reagent the reagent is the actual compound used to function as the synthon and the the uh, synthons are the positive and the negative ions uh, obtained as a result of disconnection so we should uh, know the difference between these two uh, now moving towards my uh, example and the root of uh, root one for the example is and the second path uh, b the possibility b we have a positive ion a positive ion uh, on the carbon that is attached to phenyl and hydroxyl group and the negative ion on the carbon that is attached to the phenyl a, a phenyl group and with uh, three carbon atoms other so the reagent for this compound is benzaldehyde uh, so this may be the possibility of this reaction. This uh, should not be uh, acceptable because it did not have a one reagent. Uh, it is missing with one reagent. So uh, path B will provide the uh, synthesis of the uh, root one. So this uh, this one is the benzaldehyde reagent for this synthon and uh, the, uh, the synthon having negative charge, the, the reagent of this compound will be one uh, one phenyl butyl uh, sorry four phenyl one butyl magnesium bromide this, this is the exact iopic name of the compound four phenyl uh, because phenyl is attached to carbon number four and the carbon number one is attached to magnesium so uh, four phenyl one butyl magnesium bromide so this uh, is the reagent for the uh, for this negative synthon so moving towards the synthesis uh, of this so the synthesis of uh, root one would be like when we uh, react benzaldehyde with magnesium 4 phenyl uh, when we uh, react with benzaldehyde with 4 phenyl 1 butyl magnesium bromide we will obtain uh, an addition product uh, when upon hydrolysis this addition product uh, uh, will give us 1 5 diphenyl pentane 2 ol this is an uh, uh, ionic react uh, ionic intermediate uh, between ox oxygen which is carry negative charge and magnesium which carry positive charge so hydroxyl group uh, will replace uh, sorry hydrogen from the water uh, molecule will replace this magnesium bromide so we have our uh, product so this uh, is the root one uh, for uh, or the uh, synthetic analysis uh, one for the uh, product uh, or the target molecule one uh, five diphenyl pentane two all so the next uh, route is when we dis uh, when we perform these connections between carbon number two and three we have two possibilities we have uh, po again two possibilities but uh, i will i would like to uh, discuss only one of uh, it so uh, we have uh, a carbocation uh, uh, synthons uh, carry positive charge and negative charge. The reagent for these synthons uh, would be phenyl epoxide green. This uh, uh, positive ion, the synthon, or the posit uh, positive ion obtained as a result of this connection. Uh, this uh, synthon uh, will be obtained from the reagent phenyl epoxide ring. So and uh, this is again uh, like uh, four phenyl one uh, four phenyl one bromo magnesium bromide one magnesium bromide. So when we react, uh, so our next uh, moving towards the synthesis of this. Uh, so the synthesis uh, of the root two would be. 
when we uh, react phenyl epoxide ring, phenyl epoxide ring with magnesium four phenyl uh, one magnesium bromide, uh, we will obtain uh, again the, the same product. And when we uh, hydrolyze this reaction, we will obtain one five diphenyl pentane two ol. So the moving towards the root three of uh, uh, one five diphenyl pentane two ol are the target target molecule. And this we will perform the uh, the previous two examples are the uh, examples of the disconnection. Now we perf will perform uh, functional group interconversion. So uh, we, uh, again, functional. When we uh, perform functional group interconversion to our target molecule, the hydroxyl group. This is oxidation uh, pro oxidation reaction, as I discussed uh, in the example of uh, functional group interconversion. So this hydroxyl group uh, will be converted into ketone group uh, after oxidation. So uh, when uh, again performing the disconnection between carbon number two and carbon number three, we will obtain two synthons, positive and negative uh, uh, synthons. Again, and we will have uh, benzaldehyde and uh, one fin one bromo four phenyl butane. So. when uh, we will perform synthesis of the root three we will react benzaldehyde uh, in the presence of base with one bromo four phenyl uh, one bromo four phenyl oh sorry three phenyl beauty uh, three phenyl propane and uh, we can calculate one two and three so when we uh, uh, treat uh, benzaldehyde with uh, uh, one bromo three phenyl propane we will obtain uh, one bromo five phenyl here we can calculate one two three four and five one bromo five phenyl and the hydroxyl group is attached at carbon number two and then one bromo five phenyl two on uh, so uh, again, after this is uh, functional uh, moving towards the functional group interconversion, that is reduction of the acetone group uh, into hydroxyl group. Um, we will add hydrogen uh, using lithium aluminum hydride as a reagent. So we will uh, we obtained our uh, final product one five uh, diphenyl pentane and two ol. So the mechanism for the synthesis of uh, our product, our target molecule uh, will be, if, uh, I <coughs> use the root one for, for, um, for mechanism. So when we treat benzaldehyde with uh, five phenyl one, one, two, three, four, five, we can calculate, I would, uh, I, I don't remember the hybrid name. One, two, three, four, and five. When we treat benzaldehyde with five phenyl, one magnesium bromide pentane, uh, we will have the uh, addition product uh, like this compound uh, and the interaction. Uh, between oxygen and uh, magnesium is the uh, ionic interaction. Again, uh, on acidic hydrolysis, uh, the hydrogen ion uh, or the uh, proton uh, replace the magnesium. Uh, so we have will have the final product. Uh, I would like to, uh, I am going to discuss the mechanism. So in the first step, the alkyl. The, this is Grignard T agent. Uh, I the general structure or M. or MGX. So this is an alkyl group. It carry positive, it carry negative charge because magnesium carry positive charge being metal and uh, halogen also contain negative charge. So the alkyl, uh, the alkyl uh, group in the Grignor reagent carrying negative charge attacks on the electrophilic carbon of the 
benzaldehyde so uh, as a attack of this uh, alkyl negative alkyl group the, this bonds will uh, will move on to the oxygen so the oxygen carry negative charge so uh, the, and this magnesium bromide will attach to the oxygen with an ionic interaction uh, this uh, is the next step in the second step uh, the process of the first step is uh, written so when uh, uh, alkyl negative alkyl carrying uh, uh, alkyl anion uh, attacks on the carbocation carbocation of the, or the electrophilic center of the carbon of the benzaldehyde we will have this uh, product In the second step, uh, uh, in the second step, uh, when we treat uh, the above compound with uh, a hydro hydronium ion or water, uh, 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 or H positive ion, the H positive ion replaces the magnesium bromide ion in a, uh, at place here. So we will have. Uh, our product 1,5-diphenyl pentane 2 ol uh, This is our final product and the mechanism of the reaction. So moving towards our next product uh, that is going to be discussed uh, under retrosynthetic analysis procedure. It is N4 hydroxyphenyl acetamide or paracetamol it is also known as acetaminophen uh, it is commonly used as painkiller and for fever relief in children this is a medical based product so for the target molecule This is the structure of the or the chemical structure of the uh, acetaminophen or paracetamol. Here, uh, hydroxyl group is attached uh, to benzene at carbon number at uh, position four, and acetaminophen group is attached at para position. Uh, so, when we perform the retrosynthetic analysis, uh, the uh, carbon. Uh, the carbon nitrogen bond at this position will be breaked and uh, we obtained this uh, uh, reagent this is reagent because this is not a positive and negative uh, ion uh, we obtained a, a reagent uh, I, I did not run the synthons i did uh, i written here uh, in the example uh, reagents uh, for the uh, product molecules so when we perform this connection between carbon and nitrogen, we will obtain a four aminophenol or para aminophenol well, upon functional group interconversion. When we perform functional group interconversion to para aminophenol, well, we, uh, that is uh, oxy. This is oxidation product, uh, oxidation reaction uh, uh, in in the shade of functional group interconversion. Uh, this amino group is uh, oxidized to nitro group. Here we can see that at uh, the amino group is converted to nitro group. This is functional group interconversion. So we will obtain uh, um, para nitrophenol. Uh, when we break carbon nitrogen bond between nitrogen nitro and benzene ring, we will obtain on phenol uh, the reagent for the uh, is, uh, root one. Uh, uh, the reagent for the root one. Now we will synthesize. Uh, synthesize our product from the root one. So the synthesis of the paracetamol from the root one will, will be like that. When we, uh, when we treat phenol uh, uh, with uh, sodium nitrate in the presence of dilute sulfuric acid, we will have two, uh, we will have two products. One is uh, Orthonitrophenol and the other is paranitrophenol. Here, because the uh, hydroxyl group is ortho and para directing group, so we have uh, we have two products: orthonitro, orthonitrophenol and paranitrophenol. We use paranitrophenol when we 
perform a reduction uh, to the paranitrophenol with using sodium borohydride uh, the paranitrophenol will be converted into amino para amino phenol this is para amino phenol because here the nitro group is uh, converted to amino group so when uh, para nitro para amino phenol is uh, treated with acetic and hydride acetic and hydride we will have our product paracetamol uh, now this is the synthesis of the root one for paracetamol uh, and we will now discuss the root two for the production of the paracetamol in the first uh, here we, this is the root two in this process Uh, for the first step, this amide group here, the amide group is converted to oxime group. Here we perform retro Beckman's rearrangement process. Uh, so the uh, when we perform retro Beckman's rearrangement process, we convert the uh, acetal amide group into oxime group. So this is enzyme group that uh, I would like to draw the general formula for the enzyme group. Uh, it is uh, the central carbon which has two, two, uh, two bonds and, the, and it is doubly bonded with nitrogen atom. And the nitrogen is further attached to an hydroxyl group. So this is the general formula of the enzyme Oxime group. Uh, so, uh, in the first step, uh, Beckman's retro Beckman's rearrangement uh, will occur, and the acetal amide group is converted into uh, oxime group. And in the next step, so when we uh, obtain the uh, uh, Beckman's rearrangement. Uh, we have enzyme group. Uh, after enzyme group, uh, this uh, nitrogen and carbon bond, carbon double bond, is replaced with ketone group. Here, this is uh, this nitrogen uh, and carbon double bond is replaced by ketone group. Further, here the ketone group uh, uh, is uh, the carbon carbon bond between carbon of the carbonyl group and benzene carbon is broken uh, and cleavage occurs. So, we will have phenol as the simple reagent uh, for the paracetamol in the root 2. So, the synthesis uh, for the root 1 will be. When we treat phenol with an acetic acid, we will have uh, parahydroxy acetophenone now because uh, this is acetic group, uh, acetic group, and uh, oh, sorry, this is keto group because carbon is double bonded to oxygen, and here is methyl group. So this is ketonic group, and uh, hydroxyl group is attached to para position. So this is uh, we have para hydroxy acetophenone when we treat phenol with uh, acetic acid. So uh, when uh, the when para hydroxy acetophenone uh, is treated with uh, hydroxyl amine in the presence of sulfuric acid and ammonium hydroxide we will obtain again oxime group uh, the ketone group is converted to oxime group so we will obtain this product and after acid catalyzed Beckman's rearrangement this is Beckman's rearrangement not retro uh, in the pre, uh, retro synthesis we use is retro Beckman's rearrangement so in this we use retro uh, we use sorry we use Beckman's rearrangement and convert the oxime group uh, this so we convert the oxime group into acetamide group so we will uh, have our product paracetamol uh, the Beckman's rearrangement is in this uh, is the reaction uh, in which the oxime rearranges to uh, amides in the presence of protic or Lewis acid. The conversion of the or the rearrangement of the oxime group to the amides is called the Beckman's rearrangement process.
Uh, so the mechanism for the synthesis uh, of the paracetamol is using first route is in the first step uh, the oxygen uh, donates its lone pair to the to this carbon and here double bond is formed and oxygen carry positive charge and as a result of this the double uh, the double bond between the uh, between these two carbon is uh, shifted toward this and uh, as a result of this uh, we have two ox uh, we have two electron densities at uh, ortho position and para position so the, these are the two sides uh, uh, which are electron rich uh, sides so when uh, The, uh, the when the reagent uh, the, which is nitro or com uh, compound NO2 so the, uh, the carbon on this uh, carbon uh, the, sorry the negative charge on this carbon attacks the nitrogen positive nitrogen of the nitro group and the, this bond shifted on the carbon at uh, on the oxygen atom uh, in the next step uh, here the carbon attached at this position uh, is uh, removed and uh, uh, and the bond is shifted towards this uh, towards here and this bond is shifted towards this and uh, again this uh, moving towards the oxygen uh, to neutralize the oxygen atom so a nitro group is attached at the para position uh, 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 using this uh, mechanism so when we reduce the, uh, the nitro group uh, we, uh, using sodium borohydride, it, it uh, we will have a mino group at the uh, para position instead of nitro uh, after reduction process. So we have a mino phenol, a mino or oh, hydroxyphenol, uh, sorry, aminophenol. Uh, in the second step, the aminophenol uh, attacks uh, on the carbonyl carbon of the acetic anhydrides and the bond bet uh, between the carbon and oxygen, double bond is shifted to uh, on the oxygen and oxygen carry negative charge. So uh, as a result, because oxygen uh, nitrogen donates its lone pair to the electrophilic carbon, so our nitrogen get, uh, gets positive charge. Uh, so to neutralize this positive charge, the nitrogen uh, removes its nitrogen and this bond shifts towards nitrogen uh, and nitrogen becomes neutralized. Oxygen, as I stated earlier, oxygen gets a negative charge. The, pro the next process I will discuss in the next slide. Here. And when this uh, the ox, uh, negative charge on the oxygen is again shifted towards the uh, carbon car carbon oxygen double bond, the carbon oxygen bond uh, and here is uh, moved uh, towards the oxygen and oxygen carry negative charge, and we obtained an ac acetate ion as a result, uh, and this acetate ion obtained. Uh, gets an high uh, uh, proton and become acetic acid so we have our final product paracetamol 4 hydroxyphenol acetamide so this is the synthesis of the paracetamol and now moving towards our next uh, our next analysis that is ethyl 4 amino benzoate or benzocaine Benzocaine. Benzocaine is an ester uh, that uh, is an ester that is local anesthetic commonly used as a, a topical pain reliever or in cough drops. Uh, so it is also medical based product. So the retrosynthetic analysis will provide uh, different routes for our benzocaine. The, and the route one will be that this is a sorry, I would like to do, discuss the structure. Uh, so this is the structure of the benzocaine, 4 amino benzoate, ethyl 4 amino benzoate. When the carbon, uh, carbon, when the carbon oxygen bond is break, uh, broken, but, uh, here we will obtain an 
एसिटिक अमाइनो बेंजो एक बेंजोइक एसिड amino benzoic acid when we perform the disconnection between carbon carbon uh, carbon of benzene and carbon of the benzoic um, acidic group we will have toluene sorry here toluene uh, this is sorry i would like to discuss it like as after the after the bond cleavage between carbon and oxygen we will have benzoic acid so this benzoic acid or the acidic functional group is converted or reduced to methyl group so this is functional group interconversion functional group interconversion because the acidic group is converted into methyl group so again performing functional group interconversion Uh, the um, uh, amino group is converted into nitro group this is uh, oxidation uh, uh, oxidation process and the uh, amino functional group is converted into nitro functional group when we perform cleavage between carbon and nitrogen bond we have toluene as a result and when uh, carbon uh, methyl and benzene ring is bond between broken as so we will have benzene as the uh, starting or the simple reagent for the uh, benzocaine or four eth ethyl four amino benzo eight target molecule so the synthesis uh, for the root one of the benzocaine is Uh, so, so when benzene is, is uh, undergo Uh, alkylation friedel craft alkylation and we will have toluene as a result and when toluene is uh, nitrated uh, in the uh, using hno3 in the presence of sulfuric acid we will have para nitro toluene para nitro because nitro group is attached at the para position so we will have nitro para toluene again on reduction the nitro group is converted to uh, uh, a mino group so after functional group interconversion we will have we will have para amino toluene or four amino toluene again on oxidation with kmno4 or this is also functional group interconversion the toluene group here the methyl group sorry the methyl group is converted to acetic acid acidic group so we will have amino benzoic acid after the uh, performing the functional group interconversion so when this benzoic acid a para amino benzoic acid is treated with ethyl alcohol we will have our ester product uh, and here the oxygen is removed and uh, we uh, the ethyl acid uh, ethanol is attached at the this core uh, oxygen atom so we will have benzocaine as our our product uh, for the synthesis uh, of the root one uh, sorry as a result of root one so the next uh, second root for the synthesis of the benzocaine or the retrosynthetic root for the benzocaine is in the starting we will we perform the functional group interconversion uh, here functional group interconversion that is oxidation of the amino group uh, so after performing functional group interconversion the amino group is converted into nitro group and uh, the next uh, in the next step the carbon nitrogen bond between this group is broken and we will have we will have ethyl benzo8 uh, after the uh, bond cleavage between carbon and nitrogen when uh, the bond between carbon and oxygen is uh, cleaved we will have uh, 
our product benzoic acid and upon uh, bond cleavage between carbon carbon we will have toluene as a product so uh, moving towards the synthesis for the root 2 when benzene is treated sorry we can also remove this uh, carbon carbon bond methyl group can be removed from the benzene so when benzene is uh, alkylated uh, or friedel craft alkylation upon friedel alkylation in the presence of aluminium chloride we will have toluene as a product uh, upon the oxidation of uh, toluene uh, in the presence of KMnO4 or uh, we will have uh, product benzoic acid upon the uh, addition of alcohol ethyl alcohol uh, with benzene uh, benzoic acid we have ethyl benzoate this is an ester product so uh, when uh, ethyl benzoate is treated with the nitric acid hno3 in the presence of sulfuric acid we will have a nitro ethyl nitro benzoate or para nitro ethyl benzoate so when this nitro group is uh, reduced using functional group interconversion uh, we will have our product benzocaine because this nitro group is converted into amino group so we'll have para para amino ethyl benzoate or ethyl 4 para, uh, 4 amino benzoate so this is our final product for the benzo uh, 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 root 2 uh, synthesis mechanism so moving towards our next uh, product that is 2 chloro uh, sorry 2 bromo 2 chloro 1 1 1 trifluoroethane uh, that is halothene halothene is general anesthetic and is and it is used to maintain or starts anesthesia it is this is also a medical based product so the uh, root for uh, retrosynthetic roots for this uh, for the halothene will be for, uh, in root one we will uh, so, sorry i would like to uh, describe the structure here we have ethane molecule carbon 1 and carbon 2 so three fluorine atoms are attached with carbon 1 and one bromine atom is attached at carbon 2 and one chlorine atom is attached at carbon 2 so we'll have two bromo 2 chloro 1 1 trifluoroethane so when we perform retrosynthetic analysis the carbon carbon uh, in root 1 the carbon bromine bond is broken and we will have this product and again uh, upon functional uh, group interconversion this is uh, this is substitution so uh, so the fluorine chlorine substitute in place of fluorine uh, so this is functional group interconversion and we obtain this uh, product 1 1 1 trifluoro 1 1 1 2 tetrachloro ethane molecule so when we remove a chlorine uh, from this carbon we will have 1 1 2 trichloroethene molecule so this will be our uh, starting material for the halothene moving toward the synthesis of the uh, halothene from root 1 When uh, uh, trichloroacetylene uh, is treated with HCl, uh, this is an addition product. Uh, we will have a uh, trichloro or tetrachloroethane molecule. Well, when we uh, add uh, three hydrogen fluoric, well, fluoride molecules uh, uh, into tetrachloroethane molecule, we have trifluoro, uh, sorry, well, I, the IAPIC name of this compound is 111 trifluoro 2 chloroethane and so this uh, is obtained after uh, treating this uh, reagent with uh, hydrofluoric acid so upon promination of this compound we will have our final product halothene the root uh, 2 for the halothene uh, uh, synthesis is when we uh, also 
again we will break the carbon bromine bond and uh, we will have the product uh, one 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 trifluoro two chloroethane molecule uh, upon functional group interconversion uh, or or the uh, carbon fluorine bond breakage we will obtain acetylene trichloroacetylene molecule uh, the synthesis uh, synthesis of uh, for the root one uh, is here so the synthesis for the root two uh, we use acetylene in uh, as a starting material trichloroacetylene as starting material and in the presence of antimony fluoride trifluoride at 130 degrees celsius uh, we will add three fluorine atoms three fluorine atoms at carbon one position so we will have one 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 trifluoro two chloroethane molecule upon bromination and at 400 degrees celsius this compound is converted to two bromo two chloro one 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 trifluoroethane molecule so they also halothane this is our final product so from the mechanism from the root one the double bond here the double bond of the acetylene attacks on the positive partial positive hydrogen atom of the halo acid uh, halo uh, halo acid uh, so this bond uh, will be shifted on chlorine and chlorine gets negative charge uh, as a result of uh, this because th this carbon gets positive charge because it uh, loses its uh, electron so it get, it will get positive charge and the negative charge on the chlorine atom that is uh, formed in the first step will attacks on the carbocation so the carbon the, sorry the chlorine atom is uh, attached uh, to the to carbon number one so we will have this product one 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 trichloroethane uh, trich uh, one 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 two tetrachloroethane molecule upon a reaction with uh, three uh, molecules of hydrofluoric acid uh, the removal of three hyd uh, hydrochloric acid uh, remove will take place and these chlorine uh, molecules will be substituted with fluorine molecules so upon bromination of this compound uh, we will obtain a halothane molecule uh, they, here is the mechanism of this addition of bromine so these, uh, these two bromine atoms uh, one getting po positive charge and the other one getting a negative charge uh, the negative charge of this bromine attacks on the hydrogen atom of the ethane uh, uh, second carbon of the ethane molecule so this bond will be shifted this bond will be shifted on carbon uh, so carbon gets negative charge uh, so this bromine that gets positive charge uh, the negative charge on carbon atom will attach on this bromine atom and get uh, a product of like um, here this is the final step So the negative charge on this carbon atom attacks on the bromine positive ion and the, this bromine will be attached to uh, the, uh, the, this uh, carbon anion compound so we will have our final product halothane this is the mechanism of the halothane synthesis and our next compound is 2-phenyl ethyl hydrazine or phenylzine simply phenylzine uh, so it is uh, an antidepressant antidepressant that restore uh, certain neurotransmitters in our brains and uh, this is the compound that make, makes us feel well or uh, uh, makes our mood well so uh, this is uh, and also a uh, a medical based product so the synthetic roots or retrosynthetic analysis of this compound have different roots the uh, root one will be here uh, the structure of the phenylzine is given uh, to phenyl ethyl hydrazine uh, 
two phenyl. This is carbon number one, and this is carbon number two. The uh, phenyl group is attached at carbon number two with the carbon number two, and hydrazine is attached at carbon number one. So this is the parent molecule, and this is substituent. So phenyl two phenyl ethyl hydrazine uh, is the, the name of this compound. Uh, the structural formula of the compound phenylzine. So when we perform carbon nitrogen dissociation between uh, ethane and hydrazine molecule, we will have one chloro two phenyl ethane, one chloro two phenyl, one chloro two phenyl ethane molecule. This is the reagent uh, obtained as a disconnection of this uh, product uh, upon functional group interconversion. This uh, chlorine is removed uh, or substituted with alcohol group, alcoholic group. So, uh, in the shade of functional group uh, interconversion, this chlorine is uh, substituted with hydroxyl group. So, we will have uh, two phenyl ethanol, two phenyl ethanol okay, because this carbon number one and carbon number two and phenyl is attached to carbon number two, two phenyl ethanol so this is the simple uh, uh, reagent obtained as a result of the retrosynthetic analysis of the phenylzine uh, so moving towards the synthesis of the uh, phenylzine using both one oh, so synthesis using root one uh, this is 2 phenyl ethanol. Well, uh, when uh, we treat 2 phenyl ethanol with uh, uh, thionyl chloride, we, we have 1 chloro 2 phenyl ethane molecule or compound. Upon addition of hydrazine, in the presence of HCl, we will have phenylzine or, or 1 uh, 2 phenyl ethyl hydrazine. The, uh, this is the final product. Uh, this is a single two step mechanism. So, then uh, root two for the retrosynthetic uh, analysis of phenylzine is uh, we will perform in the first step, we will perform the functional group interconversion and uh, the carbon of the ethane molecule. Uh, this, uh, the carbon number two, is converted to acetone group. This is an addition or oxidation product in which hydrogen is removed and oxygen is added. So this is oxidation of the e, uh, of the ethyl molecule uh, of ethyl molecule using uh, at carbon two and converted into acetone group. So we have two hydrazine, one phenyl ethanone or acetone. So upon uh, the carb, uh, when we perform disconnection between carbon and nitrogen here, we have uh, two bromo one phenyl ethanone uh, because bromo is, uh, bromine is attached to at carbon one. Uh, sorry, this is carbon two and this is carbon one. So the two bromo one phenyl ethanone is obtained as a disconnection between carbon and nitrogen bond. So when carbon bromine bond is broken uh, here, uh, our disconnection we will have acetophenone or one phenyl uh, one phenyl ethanone. So this is our simple product, uh, simple reagent as a result of the retrosynthetic analysis of the target molecule phen uh, phenylene. The so uh, synthesis using the root uh, root two. When we treat uh, acetophenone or with bromine, we have the one. Uh, we have two bromo phenyl ac uh, phenyl acetone ethanone or one phenyl uh, sorry two bromo one phenyl ethanone or acetophenone two bromo acetophenone upon addition of hydrazine in the presence of hbr as a, a catalyst we have the product two hydrazine phenyl ethanone two hydrazine 
बिकॉज हाइड्रोजीन अटैच अटैच कार्बन टू टू हाइड्रोजीन फिनाइल एसिटोन ऑन क्लेमेंसन रिडक्शन सो दिस इज द रिडक्शन ऑफ द कार्बोनाइल ग्रुप इनटू द अल्केन ग्रुप यूजिंग द रूट टू so our next product uh, the last product is 1 chloro 4 4 chlorophenyl ethyl sulfenyl benzene simply chlorobenzide uh, also uh, chlor also chloroparacide sorry chloro benzide chloroparacide chlorosulfenyl sulfur sulfoside these are the common names of the, the this product so the root one uh, so retrosynthetic analysis uh, they are using retrosynthetic analysis we have uh, root one for this uh, chlorobenzide when we break the carbon uh, uh, carbon carbon uh, carbon sulfur bond at this position we will have two uh, products uh, these are the reagents so uh, i did not write the synthon sorry these are the reagents if we remove uh, hydrogen at this position and bromine at this position then we will have positive here positive ion, uh, positive ion and here negative ion so that will make them synthons here these are our so here these are reagents so this is the synthesis of when we uh, combine these two or treat these two uh, simpler molecules uh, in the presence of sodium ethyl acetate and ethyl alcohol we will have chlorobenzide Uh, so this is used uh, is this is a pesticide and is used to kill ticks and mites at last we will not discuss why we have need for the retro synthetic analysis or for retro chemistry by beginning with the target molecule retro synthesis Uh, retro synthesis uh, allows chemist uh, to work in reverse uh, to work in reverse by make by breaking uh, up the complex target molecule structure to arrive at the simpler precursor uh, so by using retro synthetic analysis chemist performs a backward synthesis from the target molecule towards the starting material by using disconnection and functional group uh, interconversion techniques so here the question is also arises why do the scientists perform this technique so this is often there will be more than one possible synthetic route and retro synthesis helps in discovering these routes uh, helps in discovering these routes and comparing them in terms of the cost simplicity and feasibility He also the green chemistry or the environment efficient reaction uh, using different reagents and intermediates so this is the answer uh, of the question why do we perform this retro synthetic analysis technique so we perform this uh, analysis to determine different routes that uh, helps uh, in uh, that helps uh, in a uh, cost effective simplicity and feasibility and uh, environment friendly reactions to be obtained uh, in doing so the most favorable efficient route can be chosen before synthesis is started on an industrial scale so retro synthesis uh, retro synthetic analysis allows uh, uh, as uh, to determine different routes and uh, choosing the most favorable efficient route that is environment friendly cost effective uh, and has uh, simplicity and feasibility 
before we uh, 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 synthesize uh, uh, on uh, industrial scale. So this is uh, all from my side. Thank you. Thank you.